Hello, welcome to Romero Threads on YouTube where it's all about embroidery. In today's video, I wanna talk about the five things you need to have ready to go in order to start a home embroidery business. And in reality, you probably need 25 or 50 things really to start, but these are like the first five major ones. These are ones that can really save you time and money, especially if you're digging deep doing your research. Now, the first item, of course, is the obvious one, right? In order to start an embroidery business, you need to have an embroidery machine. For those who are doing research on an embroidery machine, you already know the endless options, like the options don't stop. If you narrow down kind of like the area that you want to specialize in, it's a little easier to eliminate some of the machines that you don't want. When you're doing research on embroidery machine, it really comes down to some simple, simple questions. There's probably five level of questions that you gotta really ask. Of course, the first one is how many needles do you want, okay? You can either start very, very basic with a one needle machine, or you can go with a six needle, 10 needle, 15 needle, maybe even a 20 needle machine. The biggest question which has debate week in, week out, is which machine should you buy? Really, that's kind of like a personal question. I really think everybody kind of gravitates to a machine. And really, it's based off how much money do you have or how much money can you invest in a machine? Because, of course, if sky's the limit, if, you, if money is not a thing, then, of course, you could go straight to the front of the line and buy the most expensive machine. Just to break it down here in the US, there really is about like 10 machines, okay? 10 major machines that you kind of see. You have your top tier, which are your top three, your Baradin, ZSK, and your Tajimas, okay? Those are like best of the best, heavy duty. Those are commercial made. Those are the ones that are really pumping out orders in big factories. Those run 24 seven at probably the highest speeds. If you're at that level, if you got good money, you might gravitate over there, all right? Then you have the more economical tier. That's where there's a bunch, a bunch of options. Really, you got your Happy, your Melcos, your Ricomas, your Brothers. There's so many other ones. Every time I get asked what machine should I buy, it's very hard for me to answer because I have three recommendations. I have my dream machine. I have the machine that I can easily buy. And you always have your third option if you're completely broke with a couple bucks okay you always have the cheapest of the cheapest and then we have a question of how many heads do you need usually if you're starting out you're gonna start with a one head just so you can learn embroidery and it takes anywhere between three months six months sometimes a year all right sometimes it can take somebody a, about three years to learn the machine and in reality nobody ever becomes like the expert that knows everything all right. I haven't met one person that doesn't struggle in embroidery because different projects introduces different challenges. You're constantly learning embroidery. Customers are always challenging you either with new designs or new projects. Don't ever feel that just because you don't know everything about embroidery, you cannot be successful because as long as you know how to create one project, you can be profitable off one project. The second item that you need when starting an embroidery business, you're going to need consumables. The definition of consumables, they are goods used by a business that needs to be replaced. And maybe I've done this also when I started. When you start, you might be tempted to start buying everything. Be very, very careful when you're buying your consumable. Really, I still have in storage stuff that I bought on day one. Stuff that I bought, I bought so much of it that I still have it and I'm ready to throw it away because I haven't used it in years. What I would recommend really when you're starting out, you're kind of like in the experimenting phase. You don't know what's your go-to product yet. Even though somebody might recommend something, you might find something that's even better. You want to buy consumables, but don't go overboard buying large thousands of quantity. Start small, see what works. When you're starting out, you're really experimenting with product. Consumables, what you need. This is really the basics of the basics of what you need. We'll start with the thread. You're definitely gonna need thread. I would suggest just buy common colors. In the beginning, buy your common colors. Don't go, don't start experimenting with all the different shades of a certain color. And the good thing about embroidery, usually 40 weight polyester thread should be good. If you wanna get a couple 60 weight, that's fine. Just don't go overboard. Common colors. 
after your thread, of course, your needles, all right, 7511. That's pretty much like 90% of embroidery, 7511. Unless you're doing hats, potentially you might need 8012s. And if you are gonna work with smaller techs, yes, you need 65. There are many options, then you could go, you're gonna eventually have to go with the ballpoint, FFG, FG, then you're gonna go to your sharps, the RGs, the Rs, RS, and gradually kind of see which needles you need. Your first couple projects, it's all experimental. All right. Yes, you can start making money. Yes, you can start doing big projects. Take your time. My third item of items that you need when starting an embroidery business, you need your garments, your blanks. This is where you're going to have to really hook up with a good vendor. The best vendors, I would say the best vendors, these are vendors that require a, a tax ID. Get all the proper documentation because that's going to open more doors and better vendors. All right. You want vendors where you're really taking advantage of these wholesale prices. And the good thing about these vendors, okay, back in the days, we had to order items like by the dozens. The good thing about now today is there is no minimum quantity. If you want to sample, if you want to test out garments, you can buy one item. When I was doing research on my polo shirts, I literally bought almost every brand all the different types of polo shirts one of each to test it out i wanted to feel the feel now what that helps me anytime a customer is asking for recommendations i even have samples at the shop now when we're talking about blanks this is one where i would advise be very very careful because you can go all out and just start buying all sorts of crazy stuff i know there's been times for us we bought more blanks than what was really necessary, okay? I got boxes and boxes of stuff that, you know, it was a good idea at the moment, but it didn't end up selling. So be very, very careful. Uh, when you start buying your blanks, especially when you go all out and you start buying large quantity, when you're in the initial testing phase, this is a time where you really gotta know two things, okay? You wanna know what is profitable and what is making you happy, okay? These projects, when you're doing embroidery projects, you gotta make sure you're, 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 you're having fun doing these projects because if not, you can easily burn out, okay? Two reasons why you can burn out in embroidery. I would say, one, you're not making any money, you're not making any profit, uh, you're, you're spending so much time completing projects and you're not making profit. And another reason why you can burn out is because you're not having fun. Embroidery is made to have fun. You have to enjoy what you're doing. If you're doing a certain project, even though it may be profitable, if you're not having fun, you can burn out. All right. So when you're doing garments, test your garment, see what you like, see what's fun. I would say the things that I like, the things where I'm having fun are projects that are quick. It's not projects that take hours and hours to complete one item. You'll eventually know what projects you like by just experimenting. Number four of items that you need when starting a embroidery business, this is a big one, all right, is your samples. Whatever you post, whatever you promote, whatever you show off, that's what you're gonna be known for. Make sure when you do your samples, you already know which products you like, you know which products you wanna recommend. That's all when you're experimenting with the garment. All right, once you're ready and you go live, now it's not as easy to start experimenting with customer projects. Unless you're a seasoned embroiderer, you already know how different fabrics react, all right? But when you're starting out, you've already done all your research with your garment, you got your go-to garment, and now you're sampling out, and you really wanna showcase, all right? One thing I would say about embroidery, once you, once you kinda get a name for yourself amongst your niche and your local area, customers, they just start coming in. They start coming in, referrals come in, and next thing you know, you're knee deep in the embroidery business. All right, it happens quick. Once you go live, it's gonna move quick. And hopefully you've already done your experiments. You already know what you like, what don't you like. You already know your go-to garments. That's why the beginning phase, your beginning phase of embroidery is so important because eventually it's gonna be a little harder to experiment. Okay, especially when orders start coming in, you kinda gotta start being automatic. The fifth item on my list when starting an embroidery business, okay? This is something I don't really hear this topic being talked about, okay, in embroidery, but this is a major one, and that is production space. And for those who have embroidery business, you know exactly what I'm gonna talk about right now. 
Embroidery takes up a lot of space. When I start a project, I like to have two tables completely clear so I can hoop, so I can put materials, so I could put production sheets, just open space to do work. Aside from production space, a big one is storage space. You're gonna have so much boxes and just stuff for your embroidery business. So space is costly. It costs money to maintain space because you're gonna have to buy shelving, drawers, to have tables, to have drawers, all right? And the more sturdy, the more stronger your, your equipment is, the more costly it is. I know for us, we like to move tables around. We don't want anything that's super heavy as a production table. Now, shelving, you might need to have it heavy, especially if you have a certain amount of gear, such as heat presses and all sorts of other items that you might use. But for the most part, you're gonna need shelving to put just garments. For us, we just have a wall filled with racks with every flex fit hat color you could think of. And I'm telling you, you're gonna take up space very, very quick. That's why from the beginning, not buying unnecessary stuff because you're gonna have to store all that extra stuff that you buy, you're gonna have to store it. There's gonna be some boxes in your shelves. You're gonna open it up and you're gonna be like, wow, I haven't opened up this box like in a year. It's hard for me to like throw stuff away, but sometimes you get so overwhelmed with just stuff. You either give it away as a gift or something, or you just throw it away, all right? Uh, vinyl, I know for us, we used to have like every color vinyl you can ever think of. And a lot of that stuff, I either gave it away or just tossed it out. So one thing to think about, nobody talks about this, all right? Because it's something so small that you really don't think about, but it, it, it can really affect quality of life. It can really affect other people that maybe live in your house. And that is the space that embroidery takes up. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below and I'll see you on the next one. Peace out.